Hi YouTube, Ryan Marco with Marco Custom Build Models coming today with something a little different. This isn't a model that I put together. Uh, if you remember, I've had Steve on here before. Uh, he did this 1951 Chevy. That's um, it's a model of a, a car that exists on another fellow YouTuber's uh, channel, uh, Cold War Motors. So um, you all, if you haven't seen that channel, on uh, he does mostly vintage stuff from the 1950s, 40s. Uh, even in the 30s, I think, and he did a Model T, which is the oldest thing he's got. Um, anyway, if you, you, uh, I got Steve with me here. Hey, hey, YouTube. So yeah, Steve uh, has been on the channel before, like I said, and um, I the reason I'm doing a little bit of talking with this model is I actually helped him a little bit on the tail lights, and we got pictures and stuff. We'll show you on that. Well, not only that, you uh, you got the model for me, which was the big thing. I was looking for one of these forever, and you were just like, "Here, I got it in stock." <laughs> That's right, I got it in stock, and now I don't have it in stock. So, uh, um, as you know, this '51 AMT Chevy has been released as a fastback, a convertible, and uh, the hardtop. So if anybody has a hard top out there, let me know. <laughs> I, I, I would like to get another one to complete my collection. But anyway, no big deal. It's just a model. So what do you got to say about it, Steve? Well, uh, like you I said. a lot of neat things here. Yeah, actually, just uh, going out to Scott's and, and talking with them there at uh, Cold War Motors. Um, I got to know some of the, the cool builds that he's done. And uh, I've replicated two of his cars in the past, a 53 Ford uh, sedan and a 58 Plymouth. That you could go and check out on uh, his channel. Right. Um, that you, Plymouth was beautiful. Man. Yeah, and everybody so loved this. everybody loved that Plymouth. Yeah, that, a lot of detail there. Uh, but uh, I decided to do another one for this year, and of course, I was trying to hunt one down for a long time. And Roy helped me out quite a bit with that. So this one was actually a saved car that Scott recently got, and uh, they did a whole series on it on his channel about fixing it up and, and like finding parts. I think they had to find a grill. They had some bumpers. Um, there were certain things like he only had one fender skirt. Uh, he made one from scratch, and of course, when I was trying to replicate this build, uh, knowing how much the car had changed, I had to pick a certain point to replicate, and uh, I think it was episode four where he's polishing the door with this almost 40-year-old polish. Old and, compound. Yeah, old, pol <laughs> old polishing compound, and he's wearing his old grubby uh, uh, overalls and and brown hat and I said you know what that right there that's what I'll replicate so I needed to do these custom tail lights which kind of look like Cadillac ish 48 Cadillacs 49, something like that, yeah. yeah but we found out recently that it was actually a, a aftermarket kit that you could order for your 40s 50s Chev uh, you could basically put Cadillac tail fence on there for anybody who doesn't know like the uh, the model kit would have had this for the tail light this is 19 uh, well, 50 to 52 style tail light. Actually, I should say a 51 and 2, I think, only mm -hmm. because 1950, they were sort of on the inside here. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, so anyway, this is what the kit looked like, other than the fastback. Uh, this is just the fastback version. So it had these tail lights, and then... And then now we have these uh, yeah. Cadillac ones. So I, I had so many ideas of how to make these, these uh, fins on the back here. I said... I, I just can't decide so I brought it over to Roy and he's like oh yeah I could do that for you and you cut it up and like in 20 minutes he had the rough design of the uh, the tail fin in there and uh, and I, I, I brought it home I started cutting it up and I added uh, some Bondo as filler and started sanding down to get the nice curve of that uh, fin the uh, actual clear tail lights were from a 1955. Yeah, I just brought uh, the Chevy. kit here. That's yeah. the that's the kit, the AMT. They've had several releases of this, by the way, and it is available now. This is the older release, and the, it has a custom set of taillights. It wasn't the original set. Yeah, that's so, right. So um, I had a bunch of these, and of course, I didn't mind giving out a custom set of taillights. It's not going to affect building one of the kits. So, right. So I, I chopped it and uh, kind of sanded it to match the uh, flow of the fin. And I gave it a little bit of polish to uh, to kind of make it clear again, so th it worked out perfectly all the way around. Uh, Roy also downloaded or, or uh, donated a set of uh, Kragers on the on the fronts for me and a set of uh, thin white wall tires. So that was very nice of him to do. And uh, I also got the figure, which was kind of interesting to do because that was a real surprise for Scott actually. Yeah, channel. it was. Uh, 
if you check it out on Cold War Motors, uh, Steve, well, this video will be up at that channel uh, on that channel where he uh, revealed the model there in front of Scott. So Scott, by the uh, he was he was already filming, and it was yeah. like he even got the polish on the side. And I said, you know what? There's something missing, and I just pulled out the figure, and he goes, "Holy cow! You even made me for crying out loud!" Yeah, and uh, he got quite a kick out of that. Actually, I should probably just show show you the details sure, on that I'll figure. Pull that figure off, yeah. Um, so on the figure here. I, uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. I even added like a beard and uh, his old style uh, glasses to his face. There was, um, this figure started out with like a t shirt and uh, some old pants and that kind of thing. So I went and I had to smooth out the seam on the back, the front here, uh, kind of where the, the waist is. And because it was a just added some bulk with some filler, yeah, just actually Bondo Spot Spot Putty did the did the job on that. Um, he had some kind of like pompadourish looking kind of hair, so I sanded that smooth, added some styrene, and and got these flaps on there for a hat. That's um, a hat. Yeah, if you've ever seen his channel or go check it out, you'll see that that that's what he looks like uh, ninety percent of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I also, with the short short sleeves, I added the uh, the long sleeves, just using some bondo, sanding it, cutting it. And yeah, here's a picture how the how the figurine started, and that's what you'll see here in the, in the photo. How it was uh, it was standard model. I think I gave you the figure, didn't I? You did. You had and a whole so pile. So what? On. What? Uh, I, yeah, like out of a particular kit. So I don't really have a way to to pass that information on how that figure came to be originally. So. I, I think the guy that you got it from liked to cut and hack a whole bunch of different figures. Well, the guy together. I bought that collection from would buy figures on some kind of web. eBay or yeah. something, and he would buy like a pack of uh, you know ten or something of these figures, and and some of them were little different scales and stuff. But he'd hack them shorter, and then people would look you know fatter, thinner, whatever. However you work. Yeah, out. exactly. Yeah. So this one was kind of a neat thing. I, I knew that I wanted to do this scene, so. To have him crouched over like that, that was just perfect. So I'm, I'm very thankful for, for you donating, all, donating the kit, all the parts, and, well, and your time for the I think tailors. it was great. I, I love, I love seeing. Like it's one thing I, uh, I'm good at doing the custom fabricating, but you know, doing some of these weathering techniques and stuff, I haven't spent a lot of time doing it. So I love seeing it. It's just fantastic. And you know, it's, it's fairly simple to do. Like yeah. I, f I found this certain set of uh, paints and techniques. It's, it's easy to do if. Uh, people want to replicate this exact style of build. Uh, I actually have the paints here with me. Okay. Um, the brand that I like to use on, on like the major rusts is this uh, Citadel Typhus Corrosion. Uh, it's actually got like a grit in it and it's oh. usually made for um, those tabletop games for like Warhammer, I believe this is exactly. So you what would it buy is. a paint like this, uh, not so much, or well, I guess uh, like the big hobby shops, like Hobby Wholesale, would carry this. Now. Oh yeah, they they would carry it. Um, there's one or two stores. Uh, what is it called? Like, uh, West Edmonton Mall has one where they do the gaming. Is yeah, that that's too? right. And like this one came from one in uh, Kingsway Mall. Sure. Um, yeah. Games Workshop. That's games what Workshop. it's called. So, yeah. Game so if you go to a Games Workshop or something. You can pick something like that up. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the one that has the texture for... Yes. The, the top of the roof, the trunk on this one has it. Uh, like right here in particular has, has that. Um, and it's kind of like a dark brown with this grit on it. And once it dries, um, they also sell this orange that uh, they'll try and sell you on. Uh, I found that with this orange, it gives it almost like way too much of a rust. Well, in the in the color that's on the bottle, it doesn't dry that color, then, does it? Because that's no, pretty orange. No, um, you have to take like a scrap brush and just run it over right. the dark brown. Um, but I found the orange was way too harsh. So like on this model, I didn't use this orange at all. In okay. fact, I used dollar store brown paint to cover this dark brown typhus corrosion. Well, they definitely pulled it off, like the color looks Yeah, good. so like it's, you get, you spend a little bit more on the, uh, the textured paint, but like dollar store brown is perfect. Have for you me. ever worked with like a color where you might add something like baking soda? Is that, is that something that? I've never tried it. I've heard of people doing it, yeah. but. Um, I, I've only heard of it. I haven't tried yeah. it either, so. Uh, if you want to see another thing that I, uh, I, I built up, I, I built this for, for Roy. Again, Roy being the kind guy he is, uh, 
went oh, thank and, you. <laughs> and uh, made this motorcycle. Actually, what's, you might as well pick it up and handle it. Yeah, what's really, really cool about this one is uh, the different tires and, and that kind of thing. You, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with like masking tape, cutting it, and just peeling it back before you tape it or, or, or paint it. And it gives you like cuts and seats. You see and a guy leather. Do on a vinyl top for his, uh, he's doing a Daytona that's in a like a barn find style Daytona. Yeah, it. yeah. It's it's really neat. You can get into all kinds of weathering techniques and that kind of thing. And like all this tire stuff and and all the different kinds of rust and that kind of thing. That's just using this typhus corrosion. I guess funny when Steve gave me this model bike. I uh, I remember looking at it and going, oh, the the handle broke, you know, and I was going to, like, put it back on. I'm like, oh, wait, it was meant to be that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it had broke uh, yeah. during uh, during transport. I'm going to just set this here on the corner. Yeah. I thought it broke during transport, and uh, I was going to go fix it. And I'm like, no, wait, it's meant to be that way. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so there's all kinds of cool and stuff. And if you want to know what that kit is, by the way, it started out... That motorcycle kit started out its life as this uh, AMT uh, motorcycle accessory kit. You get two motorcycles in this pack. Yeah. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, it was really fun to build, actually. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, and it's also the same motorbike that would come in uh, an old kit like this, for instance, old Dodge. Uh, that would be the motorbike that actually comes in that kit. So, anyway, if anybody wants to know if you have an old Dodge truck and you want to get that kit, yeah, that'd be neat to just throw in the back of a, a, a truck on display or something like that. Even well, a anything, nice, yeah. It doesn't have to be a Dodge. Yeah, yeah even a nice yeah. uh, shiny rig, and then you throw that in the back. It's like, oh, you just pulled that out of a barn, and you're going to rest. That kickstand, it came with the kit? Uh, or was that something you added? Because I don't, I don't recall that. No, that's a that's a kit piece. That's, that's a, a kit, kit piece, piece okay. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I... So everything out of the bike other than the weathering uh, yeah. is in that kit. Yeah, absolutely. Other than a little bit of uh, wiring for the uh, handlebar to... Yeah, so just the accessories hang. and that, the that's it. detail. That's really it. Everything else came from uh, came from the kit. I know she did some broken glass on the car. Oh, yes. That kind of stuff was just... You scratched it in? Yeah, so okay. one of the coolest things that I found for scratching glass, and it, it pains me to scratch glass because I restore cars too. Yeah, you want to make them nice. I, I want to I keep that glass, but... One of the coolest things that I found is just a regular old wall thumbtack. You just grab one off the poster on your wall and you scratch up the glass with it and it makes these nice marks yeah. in, in your uh, plastic glass. Well, that's awesome. Um, another trick uh, I'll just quickly mention is uh, on the interior, uh, for weathered seats, like you're using your masking tape trick that I mentioned on the bike. If yeah, you you'll see them. We've got some pictures here that will show you the interior because obviously yeah. now you can't really get to it. Um, Go ahead, keep talking about it. Yeah, the uh, the trick with having like puffs of, of seat pulling out or that kind of thing, I found was um, paper towel or toilet paper. Toilet paper also works, or like um, Kleenex, and you mix water and uh, like a e e uh, white glue. White is glue. It? Yeah, is it EPA or EVA or something like that? I'm not sure. Any kind of white glue, basically, that you can use for crafts. Uh, and you mix it like a 50-50 mix, uh, make sure you use an old brush, and you put that napkin on or whatever, cover it with this this mix, and you can kind of move it where you want all the tufts I've seen to that, that trick done, there's another channel, I don't even know who it is uh, to, off the top of my head, but he made like a tarp and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And then tarps once, once you paint it, and so that's what he, that's what the, he used for the fluff on the seat coming out of the uh, seat mm -hmm. of the car. That's right. right. The paper towel is thick enough that it gives you that puffy stuff. I noticed you have like a clear cellophane wrap that was uh, put on the seat on the real car. Yeah. Uh, what did you use for that? That just literally food cellophane. I just went and went to the kitchen, cut some cellophane out of the plastic, and just started uh, wrapping the seat. Um, a little bit of uh, super glue holds the the first layer on because it doesn't really like to stick to plastic or paint mm -hmm. and it sticks to itself really it well. sticks to itself really well <laughs> so that was the first thing was uh just super glue the first layer and then boom there's there's the rest of your cellophane it just sticks but other than that yeah that's that's all the weathering that i did the hood does it. open on this model yeah. but what we'll do is i'll show you pictures of what uh, steve has done under the hood here um what i'll do is i'll pop the hood off here but we'll get some detailed pictures here um so 
the reason I'm popping it off, it gives me a chance to ask questions. So I see, Steve, like you got some good detail. You got battery cables, uh, heater hoses, your uh, ignition wiring, and mm -hmm. some fuel line and things like that. The firewall, the detail on that, of course, is, is kit stock. Yeah. Just uh, things were brought out in the highlights with paint. Yeah, that's right. And then the um, spark plug wiring, what do you use for that? I like the size, and it looks like it flexes and as, looks like spark plug wiring. As much as I, I'd love to say one particular brand of, of wire or whatever, I just there's so many sources that I get the wire from, mostly friends and, and that kind of thing. So it's just kind of whatever you have at that moment that you can get. That's your right. On. And like sometimes it'll come in purple or bright neon yellow or whatever. And you can always paint it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So as soon as I, I'm done wiring something in, I can just coat it with flat black and there I got spark plug wires. But I will uh, have uh, one little thing that I like to uh, do was, uh, I was actually the cameraman on one of the uh, episodes that they were working on this car and Scott needed a tiny wrench to uh, take the starter off. And me being there and, and kind of yeah, it's helping a special. Me. I have I had I have one of these cars in real life, a '52, and to get the starter off, if you have a long wrench, you can't. So you That's I right. end up taking a wrench and chopping it off, and I think it's a three quarter. Yeah. So yeah. I, I actually went and made a tiny little wrench and put it on the. Okay, that's cover. what that is. I didn't even. So I'm glad you pointed that out because I didn't see that uh, that detail. I saw it there, but I thought it was just yeah. you know, the oil filler thing or something like that. So yeah. that was good. That yeah. And like on on that fifty eight Plymouth that I replicated, they were holding battery cables on with like pliers. So I cut, I made pliers. So yeah. the fuel fuel supply was a bottle, of, <laughs> right? Uh, on the thing. So I put that on the. Yeah, if you ever watch uh, Scott at Cold War Motors, basically, uh, if you like well at run videos, he's basically the the, the, the pioneer yeah. of of starting that on YouTube, being the first one who actively went out and. And made a series on Well It Run, and this car was one of the cars on that series. That's right. That's right. Um, same with the '58 Plymouth. Uh, that cool. was uh, one of my favorite videos uh, growing up, and, and watching him make those videos as they were going up. So I, I had a special attachment to that '58, and of course, uh, me being there a couple times to uh, video and, and uh, help out with the car, that was neat. So uh, of course, I would choose this one to uh, to replicate. Oh, that's cool. That's good. Now the other two models, uh, I noticed you sort of uh, some guys have bought those off you, but this one here, you're going to hang on to. Uh, no, I um, I gave Scott the '53 Ford, so that's yeah. in his collection. And uh, the other star on the show is uh, Dean Barrett, and uh, I gave that '58 Plymouth to him. So uh, I was out of Cold War Motors cars in my personal collection. So, so I, basically, this one you want to keep. Yeah, this one's going nowhere. I had Scott the, sign the front of it. And uh, that's staying in my collection. So. Well, I love it. Yeah, that's at that, uh, the Alta on the, the Cold War Motors and the, the design there. If you see mm -hmm. the channel, it's on there. Yeah. Well, very cool. Thanks for coming and uh, showing off this model. Is there, is there anything else, uh, Steve, that you wanted to talk about on this thing? Uh, no, just pretty much, uh, guys, you should try weathering up your stuff and uh, try something a little bit different other than all the clean builds and happy modeling, you know? <laughs> that's some advice for myself. I uh, I don't get into weathering anything. So, But anyway, well, that's cool. And uh, that's it. So really, that's all we have to show for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and everything we, we talked about here. And uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe, hit that like button, ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss any. Have yourself a great day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.